Hello everyone, and happy holidays! At the time of this recording, this video was written in the middle of December, so I thought I'd sprinkle in a little holiday joy in this video. A little bit random, right? However, the point of this video today is to go into an aspect of gaming that is not very reflected much in the 80s and 90s. That's because games back then were more focused on scripts and AIs of the enemies and the level designs. That's just how games were. That's how they were made. It was kind of like, it was kind of as if it was an unspoken rule for how developers made video games. Now, don't mistake randomizers with random elements of games, such as potential crit chance in games featured such as Dota or RPGs. That's a gameplay element and a good topic for a different video. We'll make note of that later. But the full aspect of pressing a single button and playing one of your favorite video games, but it's all crazily mixed up with changes of items, enemies, and other experiences, we're going to dive into that today in why randomizers matter. Precursor, while doing research and learning about this topic, I saw there wasn't much information about what randomizers do but none about why the importance and why they're so popular. Thus, why this video is being made. So on this episode of Why This Matters, we're going to look at randomizers and their relevance in video games today. For those who don't know, Why This Matters is a series that is focused on looking at gaming and its relevance in modern times. We do this by looking at a topic in a retro perspective to see and understand why something has importance within today's time. So strap in as we speed warp around Hyrule and collect Metroid items, yes, that's an actual thing, and explore the world of randomizers. Well, randomizers are modifications or programs that introduce an element of randomness, or chaos, into the gameplay experience of a classic video game. These tools are often created by gaming communities and are applied to existing games to offer a fresh and unpredictable gaming experience. The goal is to add replay value to games that may have become predictable or a little too familiar. Value I'm not going to be diving too deep into Resident Evil 2 for the 64, as that did have a traditional randomizer button that could be pressed and change the game, but it was very basic and didn't offer much replayability other than changing some of the items. Simply put, randomizers brings new life into games. For those that may be unaware, video games that are mainly story-driven, not multiplayer, or grand battle style games such as Fortnite or League of Legends. After playing one for so many times, and beating it is very similar to enjoying your favorite food. At first you might enjoy eating something you really like. So you want it to so you want to have it every day. You want to do it every day. You want to enjoy that same flavor. And as you eat it every day, it goes into weeks, into months, into years, and uh, what about five years, ten or twenty? Well, that's what happens with video games as well. What can happen is gaming burnout. If you've played a particular type of game excessively in the past, you may be experiencing burnout. Burnout is commonly used in adulting or college, as you might hear of college burnout, but this can also happen with video games. When you're playing your game, you know and you've beaten it before, such as Pokemon, you know the best route, you know the best items, you know where the best items are, you know the secrets, you know the best Pokemon to get for fighting certain teams, you know which moves you should be training your Pokemon with. You're sure you can mix it up by trying playing with a new Pokemon or two, but people possibly are going to gravitate towards some of your favorites. You know the best route, you know where all the items are, and you know how to beat the final boss with almost no effort. I know this personally at times when I go back to play one of my favorite games, Final Fantasy VII. I absolutely love this game. However, I fall asleep playing this game from the battle scenes, and after I wake up to a game over screen, I turn the game off. And this is because I can't focus as much on the game as I could in the past. It doesn't have as much flair for me anymore because I know what the enemies do. I've seen the animations. I know I've read the story so many times. At this point in my life, it's very similar to a very, very long movie. On that topic, are you experiencing gamer burnout? 
If so, leave a comment in the comment below. I'm curious about what you might be playing a bunch of and not having that much fun anymore. A second aspect about why randomizers out of spice to life is involving lack of challenge with games. If the games you used to love no longer provide a challenge or excitement, this can lead to boredom. You know you're an expert at a video game when you can practically speedrun it by accident because you know the best strats and you know where all the items are. This is a large factor about why people say Pokemon is now easier than it was in the past. It's not because of the development of the game or lack of AI, but us as gamers just have more knowledge than we did when we were 10, 11, 12, when we were kids. But us as gamers had more knowledge, we've essentially leveled up our gameplay. And because of that, these games don't provide as much of a challenge anymore. And we tend to not really gravitate back to them. You beat it once, maybe twice if you really liked it or you want to try one of both versions. But then after that, you put the game down and possibly trade it. Because of that older experience we've had, we can now play through these newer titles with minimal to no effort. It's disappointing. And lastly, and this one's a big one, is nostalgia. Sometimes the memory of a game can be more enjoyable than the actual playing the game again. Nostalgia creates a distorted perception, and the reality of replaying a game may not live up to the fond memories. I bet as you're watching this, yes, you might have a game that you really, really enjoy. So, 15 years later or so, you go back and you find that game on sale. It's fantastic. Oh man, look at this game, it's on sale. Great, I'm going to go buy it. And you plug in your retro PlayStation or older console you might have not seen in years just to discover that it's not how you remember it. You blast through it in about half your normal time and you don't even find it very hard. For me, that game was Quest 64. I can't make it past 50 minutes into that game because it's just so monotonous. I, when I was a kid, I beat the daylights out of that game. It felt so rewarding beating the final boss and pushing through and leveling up your spells. But nowadays, it's clunky and slow. My nostalgia glasses are stronger than my willpower to play that game again. Or man, I'll have the fun memories, but I probably won't touch that game ever. Gamer burnout, lack of challenge, and nostalgia are some of the biggest factors that lead to a, a video game falling off and becoming something that just collects dust on your shelf. And as gaming generations change, this is going to keep happening. Well, this is where randomizers play their role. Shout out to Bakba Soup for allowing me to live record his stream where he plays a lot of where he plays a lot of randomizers. Thank you. Randomizers fix these problems in different ways, and how they do so is in a really weird and kind of complex, interesting way. First off, let's think about gamer burnout. To avoid having a game being too stale, a randomizer fixes that by allowing to essentially adjust the difficulty with a slider. You can actively change how hard the game is going to be by just pressing a couple of buttons. For example, instead of playing the base game with base enemies, you can mix up the location of where enemies might spawn, or how many, or how much health they have. For example, Resident Evil. The game has a flaw that you can kill almost every zombie with a well-aimed shotgun blast in the head. Well, what if you change that to where every zombie is now a crimson head? This 100% changes the game. Now, now instead of having a single shotgun kill everything in one hit, you essentially need to dodge these guys because they take two to three now to take down? That's so much harder. And that one little change essentially restructures the entirety of that game by just changing the one enemy. Or another example, how about this? You know the perfect route for every item in Legend of Zelda. Well, in an item rando, the first item you're meant to get was the lamp handed to you by your uncle to help you see in the darkness of the sewers. But now instead, let's say you acquire bombs. Interesting. That allows you to skip a decent portion of the game and start progressing to an additional dungeon earlier. Yes, it does make the sewer section a little bit difficult, but this unlocks additional 
items that you normally wouldn't have access to. It's This also allows you to take the game in a completely different order instead of beating the bosses in the order the game wants you to do. Get the certain get these pendants in order one two three and then beat the crystal dungeons in order one two three four so on so on you can now beat them in an almost mixed up order splash this in with an enemy randomizer and for all of a sudden and when you get to that very first dungeon which was probably let's <laughs> say a bad randomizer turtle rock you're fighting you're fighting that stupid moth <laughs> have fun and that alone it is enough of a challenge for even the most seasoned player to enjoy Legend of Zelda Link to the Past again. This is, and what's more fun about this is it's even more, it's even more compounded when Link to the Past was combined with Super Metroid, two very popular Super NES games. But now there are speedruns that feature both games fully randomized with their items all mixed up where you can collect Legend of Zelda items in Metroid and Metroid items in Zelda, making it very interesting where you're, when your first hit item you find happens to be Charge Beam for a completely different game, meaning you need to go to the other game and use that item to proceed forward. It adds an extra layer and complexity to not just one, but two games at once, making both of these experiences so much fun to play and watch. Not only do items and enemies get mixed, but with the power of mods, you can practically play a brand new game using the exact same assets from a previous game. For a good example is Resident Evil Classic has a mod that allows you to randomize the characters you're, you interact with while playing the game. So for example, you could pick playing the game as Nemesis, the boss from <laughs> Resident Evil 3, where his all his texts and voice lines are grunts and he yells stars or or you play the game as barry barry burden and you basically relive the entire spencer mansion playing as the side character for the entire thing these randos are a lot of fun because it's like watching your favorite movie but with all the actors all mixed up in their different roles imagine watching terminator 2 where the T-1000 is the good guy, Terminator is the person needing to be saved, and John Connor is the bad guy. What kind of movie? I would pay money to see something like that. That would be amazing. These randos are a lot of fun because it's like watching your favorite movie. I talk a little bit about this about why RE2 matters. However, instead of knowing what the next line is, it's like a silly improv show. Anyway, the show where everything's made up and the points don't matter. That's right, the points are just like how wrong your girlfriend is when you're having a fight with her. This livens up the game to an unexpected level and it's just hilarious to watch. There are full Twitch channels that just do this all day. And finally, unlike the limited context of single style video games, this does something that has an unexpected benefit of having everything randomized. Unlimited content. Yes. Unlimited content. Every rando will be a little bit different. Every single one, assuming you're not playing the same seed. Everyone will have every single rando will have a slightly different item locations, lines, characters, essentially everything. You can make the game as hard or as easy as you want, but why make it easy if you can just flex beating 15 bosses in the first room with only a handgun? The options and availability to modify one of these games is literally endless. So, overall, randomizers are just a great addition to the gaming world, and I hope companies capitalize on the style of altering a game to make it more engaging for its players, because we know these games sell, looking at you Dead Cells and Hades, as this is a relatively easy way to bring brand new life into relatively stale games or games that might have fallen off as this is one way and an easy way as well to bring new life into a game that may have been way past its prime <laughs> like many of the older video game titles like and that's why randomizers matter 
Hey, thank you for watching. And if you like my content, let me know by leaving a comment below. It really means a lot to me. These videos take time and I'm hoping the comments below and I appreciate you. Uh, happy holidays and I'll see you in the next one. See ya. Peace.